Hi, it's Bruce, and welcome again to my Colorado Rocky Mountain Labs. And uh, today we're taking a look at a Kronheit Model 5100B function generator. This generator is in excellent condition, very nice looking, and performs very well. It'll produce uh, negative going pulses or ramps, a positive going ramp, sine wave, triangle wave, and square wave. And it'll do it from uh, 0 0.002 hertz up to um, 3 megahertz. And it does it in uh, nine ranges. We have a calibrated output uh, attenuator minus 40 dB, 20 dB, and 0 dB. Uh, we have the function control here. We have a, um, a symmetry control that allows us to um, uh, change the uh, symmetry of the waveform that's being produced, and I'll demonstrate that later so it's easier to understand. We have a DC offset so we can raise or lower the AC waveform by a DC amount. Um, we have a switch that allows us to go from a dial tuning to a voltage tuning where we put in a negative voltage from 0 to about negative 15 volts and, uh, and that will run us like a hundred to one over the range of frequency. Um, and we'll demonstrate that as well. We have the voltage input here. And then we have an output uh, uh, that produces 5 volt uh, square wave that you could feed to a frequency counter and it, it replicates the frequency that's on the uh, uh, coming out of the unit. So there's a lot to cover here, but uh, right now we are running this in the lowest mode at the lowest range, 0 0.002 hertz incredibly slow and I have uh, this Rigel DS1102 uh, has been working the last several minutes to produce the the waveform and we can see by looking at it that it is uh, uh, it is a sinusoid um, it like I say it took several minutes to gather the data um, and we are on a what they call a 50 second time base here so it is very slow. Um, we're going to go ahead and step her up. We'll take it to uh, 0 0.01. And since that's a decade higher, I'm going to reduce my, uh, my time base here. Let's take it to um, 10 seconds and see what we have. And I'll come back in a moment. We'll take a look at the result. Okay, it's... Uh, been roughly a minute and what we can see uh, it is continuing to draw very slowly the sinusoid for a 0 0.02 Hertz frequency we are getting it let's go ahead and raise ourselves another decade and I'm going to take us uh, down to one second Let's make it two. We'll come back in a moment. Okay, here we go. The sinusoid is going much faster. We're running 0.2 hertz right now. No problem. We're going to go to two hertz. And we'll reduce our uh, time base again. There we go. There's 20 hertz. Two hundred hertz. Right. 
2000. And I'm calling out this by looking at the dial. We have the two on here. Um, there maybe actually is a uh, slight offset. Instead of 2000 hertz, we're getting right now about uh, 1750. So we're a little off. A small change on the uh, on the dial though makes a pretty big change on the screen. There's 2000 right there. And then we go to 10 20,000 uh, yeah and this would be 200,000. And then we're going to raise our dial up now. Let's go ahead and put ourselves mid-range. Yeah, let's do 10. It's easy. Okay, right uh, right at the moment we would be reading uh, about a megahertz. That's megahertz on the screen. This would be um, about 100,000. There would be 10,000. Let's try a different uh, different waveform. Here's our triangle waveform. And that's our triangle waveform at about uh, 100,000 hertz. We go to a square wave. Here's our positive going ramp. This would be our negative going ramp. We're going to have to change our trigger level so it can read it. There we go. We've locked it. Negative ramp. And let's take a look now uh, at our symmetry control. Now I'm going to turn on that symmetry control and we should be able to uh, deform that ramp. And let's see what we do. Okay, we've delayed the time between the uh, pulses. Let's go to the positive ramp. Okay. And again, I'm changing the symmetry. We're lengthening the ramp. So now it takes a much greater time for the completion of the ramp. Let's try a sinusoid. All right, there's the sinusoid without the uh, symmetry. Here we're applying symmetry, and you see that we're deforming the sine wave. Actually changing it more into a ramp. Okay, triangle. So that's your symmetry. We have a DC offset. We're negative, going positive. So you see, we shifted the whole waveform. And uh, let's see. We want to demonstrate the uh, uh, the voltage controlled frequency, uh, where we put ourselves into external here. We don't see a frequency on the screen. All right, we have the switch into external with the negative voltage input. We have the cable going to the voltage controlled input, and it's coming from this BNK uh, out power supply back here. And, and what I've done is I've connected it up backwards, so we're feeding negative voltage into the unit. We're going to turn ourselves on, and then we're going to adjust the... Uh, the voltage on this control. I'm just going to turn the voltage up. You'll see that the the needle over back here, you'll see the needle going up. And as I do that, you'll see the frequency increasing. And right about here is 15 volts. And so that's around the uh, maximum. Actually, we're still getting output up to 17. So 17 volts. And so now if I take it back down to zero, 
you can see that we're controlling the uh, frequency with the voltage and that uh, that changes with the range uh, switch let's raise ourselves up again right around in here we should hit the maximum right about there and then take it back down okay so now let's demonstrate the uh, the output here we have a 5 volt square wave output that's in lock to the frequency from this unit okay so we put ourselves back into dial tuning we're getting an output now and we're feeding from the 5 volt square wave output into the oscilloscope and we can see right now that uh, we are getting uh, about 981 Hertz small adjustment here and we'll bring ourselves up to a thousand right, there's a thousand Hertz and that can be fed then to a frequency counter so that you can simultaneously read your frequency uh, while you're dialing here. Nice feature. Okay, so um, I'm feeding a signal from the crone height into channel 1. That's the sinusoid that you see flickering back and forth and then I've got that Ray Caldini unit up in the, sort of the yellow unit on the top up there. It's feeding in a signal that's roughly the same signal, a thousand hertz. That's the triangle waveform you see that's stationary there. And uh, that's because right now we're triggering off a of channel two. So I'm able to hold that, that uh, triangle waveform stationary. But because these are not crystal controlled and they're not uh, they're not exactly the same frequency it's impossible for the uh, the scope to lock on to uh, both signals at the same time they're just that different in frequency however in the rear of this crone height there's an input for an external sync source so what I've done you see I've got a uh, a double pronged uh, connector here and I have uh, a cable coming from that external sink source in the back of the uh, crone height. I'm going to plug it on this extra connector here and uh, instantly you see an improvement and then with just a little bit of manipulation you see me lock in. Now what's happened is the crone height has taken that sync signal and it's shifted the frequency just enough so that they are in lock. That's the point of the uh, sync input. And I'm able now to see both uh, both signals, and I can adjust them so that they are are as close as possible. So there we go. Okay, so here's a little bit something different. Um, I've got the output of the crone height going to this analog scope up here. I just it's analog is better for the demonstration that I'm doing. And then I'm feeding a signal from the Ray Caldani unit there into the voltage controlled input here. But I'm leaving myself in the dial mode. I've got myself tuned in to uh, 2 megahertz. Could have chose anything. And uh, we see the result and frequency showing up on the, on the screen. But I haven't yet turned up the 
amplitude of the input from the Ray Caldena. Well, watch when I, what happens when I do. Uh, you see it now? We're modulating the waveform with the signal from the Ray Caldena, and I can change the frequency of modulation. And by controlling the amplitude of the Ray Cal, we control the amount of modulation that we get till we get right back down to unmodulated. So that's another feature of the unit. So there we go. I hope you uh, enjoyed the walkthrough of the features of the Krone Height 5100B. Uh, it has a lot of interesting features to it. Uh, it works very well. Still commands a pretty decent price on uh, on eBay. Um, in this case here, uh, the unit is in remarkable condition. You get a real nice look at it and you get to see it functioning totally throughout. So, happy bidding. Thank you for listening and we'll see you again next time. Bye-bye.